right, so at this point, hopefully you're already familiar with the chord families and you kind of know what to expect when you see the first couple chords of, of a song. You're, you're able to figure out pretty quickly what the few chords, a handful of chords are that are going to be used in the song. And then it's just a matter of trying to make those sound really cool. And each chord kind of has its own like common alterations that it has. So let's start with, we have the, the caged chords, C, A, G, E, and D. Let's start with some of those. So uh, when we're playing a C, some of the most common alterations to this are uh, this right here is our just our regular plain old C, probably the, the C that you um, are most familiar with. And then um, it's pretty common to have this pinky throw in thrown in up here so you could play a C or you could play that and all these alterations are uh, frequently used like within a strumming pattern so if you had a C like you could do that or you could you could throw in that alteration you get so it kind of sounds like you're playing a melody when you're not you're just playing a C chord and then altering it slightly with an extra finger that was thrown in there. Um, another really common one is to use this finger to uh, take that one out or put it in. So. So the assignment for this lesson is going to be to take any of these alterations, or maybe all of these alterations, probably not all of them, uh, but all these alternate fingerings for these chords, and start incorporating them in the transitions that you're already practicing for the chord families. So if you're in the key of G, you've got a G chord, a C chord, and a D chord, and an E minor chord. So then you'd want to start like incorporating this transition of like this alteration on this. So with that's the regular G, and then going to the C. With that alteration. And of course, going in all the different patterns that there are. For, so that was just C to G to D to E minor, but then you'd also practice this C, or the G to the D to the C to the E minor, and every other permutation of the, those four chords that you could possibly come up with. Um, so, but just getting used to when I'm on a C chord, this is one of the things I can do and throwing that one in there. Another one that's a little bit harder to transition to, um, is, but it's an alternate fingering for that C, is this one right here. So uh, you've got two fingers in here on the third fret, on the first string and second string, and then you've got this thing. So it almost looks like a G. And sometimes it's called like a C add two or a C add nine or a C nine or a C two. So you, and you can still do this alteration with this one. And you can still do this alteration where you so that's like four or five different fingerings just for that one chord so when you're practicing your chord families you can make them sound kind of special and cool by doing your alterations on your chords so that was c and then the next one would be an a so this is a typical a chord So then, um, on, on probably the most common alteration for this one is just taking this finger out. And that's called an A2, or an A9, or an A add 2, or an A add 9. Uh, it should be called an A2, but a lot of people call it the wrong name. And so when you see an A add 9, a lot of times they just mean that thing right there. There are also other versions of A that you can do. There's like A minors and A7s and stuff, but I would recommend not um, mixing up uh, chords that just have the same root in them. So an A minor and an A major are two very, very different things. So probably for the A, this is going to be the most common one right here. And anything else like turning into an A minor is going to get kind of messy. So don't just mix up the ones that all start with A. Like they're all A's. That's not really the case. So an A, two to an A. Then we have the G chord, the C, A, G. So the on the G chord, uh, this is just the traditional regular G, and then you can do that same thing we did with the C chord, where you put these two fingers in right here. And this is probably the most common, uh, most commonly used in the key of G, because um, you can play that G and then just move these two fingers right here to that C right there. So 
these two fingers just get to sit there the whole entire time, which is kind of great and kind of painful because uh, a couple minutes into the song, when those have just been sitting on those same two strings, they're going to get tired of holding those strings down. But So you got your uh, C chord and your G chord back and forth here. So that's one alteration to the G. Um, and then on that G, you also have this finger right here. Just like on the C chord, we had this finger that would get lifted up on the, the second string from the lowest one, second string from the root. We had that on, on the uh, G. We have the same thing on this, uh, on this. <laughs> we had that on the C. We have the same thing on a, on a G right here where we lift this finger up. So we've got the G that could be altered by putting this finger in. Uh, we've got the G that could be altered by moving that one around as well. Um, and then this one right here is technically, technically a, a G6 and a six chord can usually go in the place of a major. Um, like if you've got a G major chord, you can usually throw in a G6. But I would recommend just using that one kind of sparingly, like uh, just as a, a real quick. Just real quick back and forth and not actually sitting on that one. Whereas like the G2. You can use that one a whole lot. So that's the uh, G2 to the G. And then we've got uh, C, A, G, E would be the next one. And this E chord right here is actually extremely versatile. So um, probably the most common thing on the, the E chord is just having it be open and then uh, hammering on to all those. So just playing a, like everything like that and then playing that. That's especially good on uh, anything that has like a darkish feel to it or like a bluesy feel. So. So you can use that one right there. Um, also, this one right here, if you want to throw in the two of the E, you can put this one in on the um, first string on the second fret. Now, this fingering though, we're going to use this in all kinds of other places. So this thing right here, we can keep that same uh, shape basically and move it around. And especially in the key of E. We can use that same fingering. We'll learn about that in some other lessons. Uh, but using this thing and using that. alterations to that E chord. So that's C and A and G and E. And the last one we would talk about would be a D. So this is the D chord. And then it's pretty common to take this middle finger out and this would be a D2. And as you can probably tell, this two thing, this two business is a really common thing, especially in guitar, because a lot of times on guitar, it just requires like taking a finger out or putting a finger in to create that two feeling. So it's kind of a guitar-ish thing to do to play two chords. Not play two chords, but play chords that have a two in the number, like a D2. So that's just taking the middle finger out and putting it in. Also, on this D chord, this pinky is sitting right here next to this thing called the D suspended. You don't have to know that it's called a D suspended, but if I put that pinky in right there, that's also a really common alteration to the D. So I had to play the D and the D suspended and then the D, and then the D2. So you have several different options there. In fact, that, that pattern right there. That's like al almost exactly that is the entire song of Free Fallen, uh, which is one of the most common uh, guitar songs to play. So the D, the D suspended, and the D2. Now, the cool thing about the D suspended is it's got those two fingers sitting right there, and you might recognize that from something else that we did where we played the G, the C chord here with the add nine, add two, whatever you want to call that thing right there, and then the G that we had. So we can play in the key of G with, that is supposed to have a G and a C and a D and an E minor. We can play a G and a C and a D suspended 
and then we've got three out of the four chords. And also, if you wanted to, if you're going to go that far and you've got an E minor. So sadly, the lesson preview has come to an end and it's time to say goodbye to everyone watching the free streams. Of course, paying subscribers at LearnPianoLive.com can continue watching this lesson and several hundred others like it in the archives. So come on over and check us out. And if you like what you saw, at least like and subscribe and then tell your friends to head on over to LearnPianoLive.com to start enjoying this journey with us. 